Hey, everybody. Welcome back to The Spin Rack. I'm here with the boys, PD and Kyle. Say what's up, gents. What up? You ready to rock? Hey, we're talking about Stan Lee here. It was just his birthday. Guys, what do you think about how DC and Marvel are treating this? It's amazing. That DC this. Let's get DC, into it. DC, A+. Plus. Marvel, F. Expound, please, Kyle, because I'm already in agreement with you. <laughs> All right. I sent the... Uh, hey, Sam, you got those images I sent? I got the comics. No, no, oh. before you even show... You got that image I sent you? The Hold Marvel image? Second. Let me see. Yeah, let's put that up. We can see what Marvel and all their glorious handiwork. So you're saying you got some stuff from Marvel that Marvel did. A lot yeah, I sent, it, I sent okay. it as a text earlier. Hold on. Or lack thereof. And this, I think, comes back to where the, how they treated the, the whole death of, of, of Stan Lee. I think DC came out, you know, with the whole back, you know, they, they were more, um, you know, they were more, you see, they showed more stuff with their stuff. I think they did more, more images. Here we go. This is from Marvel. That's, that's all from Marvel. All aspiring page in all their comics. A one page in all their comics. A hundred so, years and still inspiring us. We love you, Stan. Stan Lee, okay, Stan Lee, who was the master of the Mary, March, Mary Marvel Marching Society, who made true believers, turned people into Marvel zombies, got a pinup. That's it. Got a pinup, which is a step above the banner he got when he passed away. So he got a pinup, you know, from Marvel Comics. The house that he, Kirby, Dicko, Lieber, Oh, that, you know, that all those guys had a hand, but without a doubt, Stan Lee Presents is what we all remember. So that's what he got from Marvel, which is kind of real bargain basement at the end of the day. What did he get from DC? Yep, watch that. Oh, hold on for a second. Let's get out of this because we're going to stop sharing. We're going to get out of that. And then... Uh, Selector. That should... Selector. It's coming. Selector. Yes, sir. You have to be like this. Why do you have to be a ball breaker? <laughs> I don't even know what song that is, bro. You're off tune. DC you know, has a special code, Cal. And here's what we got from DC. Tales from Earth 6. A celebration. A celebration of Stan Lee. No, not a different Stan Lee. But yes, the same Stan Lee whose birthday just passed on the 28th and was so instrumental and crucial to the development of the Marvel Comics universe that we know today. So from his competitor, as he did, as he loved to call them, the distinguished competition, he actually got a comic book <laughs> celebrating the work that he did. And from the house that he helped to build, he got a pinup. Well, and you know, I know people would like to shoo this off as the, the littlest thing. The fact that you had the work that you did with Stan, right? You not only, you got it in one of their Earths, you got, <laughs> it's like that, that can't be any more DC than having him his own Earth, right? And at the same time, you know, this was the, Oh, you got it there. Oh, wow. Wait, is that oversized? Yep. It is how many pages? It's like <laughs> 100 pages. I think I need, 100 to get, pages. I, think I need to get that. That's ridiculous. oversized. Ridiculous. When I saw this, I said I had to do a double take. But then again, again, DC was more proactive um, celebrating the death of, not celebrating, but, you know, acknowledging the death of, of, um, of Stan Lee than Marvel was. Marvel seemed to have been slow at the game. And now, celebrating his birthday, you have a hundred page comic. I can't, I, I don't even know what to say about this. You know? It's I'm rare sure. when this happens. As DC has resigned itself to saying, look, we're comfortable being number two. It's rare when this happens. But every once in a while, DC does come out and show them how it's done. It's like, no, this is how you do it. Well, I would like to, I'd like to um, say about these, whether it wasn't something that hit stands and revolutionize anything but i say if you put it in comparison to the stuff that image did and the stuff that came after with all the heavy diversity basically he did great decent characters 
with okay backstory, which image carries had none. And at the same time, they were diverse characters without saying all around, hey, this chick is Mexican. It's the first Mexican hero. Oh, we have a black Batman. None of that was said. The characters just are, you just pick them up. It was about, hey, here's Stan. And here's uh, his actual, the, the other part that I like is the different designs that they got. Having these people do, basically do similar to what would be like um, current day kind of looks. But at the same time, I, I really like, and I don't, I, I liked all, at least the first, I know, you know there's some other, Shazam was kind of, with having it be a monster was kind of different, but at the same time, it was just fun. It was just fun comic books. You, it's hard to compare what we look at as some of the classic things, but it wasn't a bad effort on Stan. So I'm really glad that they did something. They celebrated Stan, they put something out here. And at the same time, you know, it's hard to do this because Every turn post um, Stanley basically moving towards Hollywood. And whether you say he's sitting in the room, I think um, Key and Peele did a joke, which is a fine joke of saying Stanley just having crazy ideas in the boardroom. The thing of it is, is having that cheerleader there for that time while they're trying to get stuff. And it takes a while because the superhero trying to get over the hurdle of people not believing in the superhero movies and you have the cheerleader the ambassador there supporting it and then you get into cartoons and then the animation people are like hey it's stan we love stan stan you know why don't we you do some voiceover for us oh wow stan is great with the voiceover let's keep having them intro some of these things let's, <laughs> and then next thing you know after that goes on you know then you have i always go to the lone voices of um, Stanley and Wesley Snipes talking about Blade and the Black Panther. And the order was Black Panther and Blade. They were saying, oh, we're producing. Oh, Wesley Snipes is doing Black Panther and Blade. Wesley's like, yeah, we're doing Black Panther and Blade. And the next thing you know, Wesley says, um, Black Panther isn't ready, but the script for Blade is ready. We're doing it. And then the whole catalyst for the whole Marvel Universe through that. And then you have, obviously, Stan Lee you know, starring and having his, you know, moments in these movies. But when he actually had to, which led to this thing where he's, you know, they weren't paying him for his executive producer, you know, he had the credit and he showed you how to, how to take on the conglomerate. He had a contract, it's EP, he sued, basically DC guilted them and they're like, oh, damn, look at that. He's working with DC now. All right, just give them some, you know, they, they might have even figured a, a decent rate to give them, but it's just like the guy been sitting in the room cheerleading projects that he probably thought this ain't going to work. But since the successes with the Hulk to, you know, the things that are kind of for us as a kid, Spider-Man was cool. But, you know, after the time you see the web shoes outside, then you start getting cynical. But he was cheerleading that when they had the bad movies in the 90s. He was trying to build energy if it worked or not. He had, you know, as a movie maker, you don't get to just turn around and say the movie's trash. You had to support the product that's about to come out. That's there's no way around it. If you torch the movie and say something while they're promoting it and they don't promote it like we don't know what we got. It doesn't look great. Here you go. You had to promote the movies and he, you know, did that. So I'm going on long, but, you know, basically this guy who created, co-created the Marvel Universe. And I don't think that, I think they should stop taking Captain America off these things with Stan because they're like, oh, Stan didn't create Captain America. So let's not put, he's, real, he's in the first story. He had like the pro story in Captain America. So yeah, he didn't create him, but he did a, enough content with the character, re-brought him into the, you know, he, he, you have to go through Stan Lee and Martin Goodman to get a character back. So <laughs> Stan Lee is the only Stan Lee is the only reason why we know who Captain America is. Otherwise, he'd be one of these golden age characters like uh like the Condor or Wonder Man or something of or, uh was it? Yeah, Wonder Man or something of that nature. No, no, Wonder Man's not the right name. Anyway, but he'd be one of these characters from the golden age that nobody knows who, you know, who the heck they are at the end of the day, or like the golden age Adam running around with the uh with the tunic on and everybody has no idea who he is he brought the character he brought the character back put him on the avengers okay and that's the that is the captain america that people know now, did he create him no 
but this is still the guy. But he said, no, we can bring this dude back right over here and we can work. We can work with him. Same with the submarine at the end of the day. So yeah. you, you just give credit where it's due and you guys are fine. But the whole like, but again, Marvel got really nothing to say, you know, to those lads regarding this right here. DC, 100 page book. It's a comic. You would have thought Marvel would have done something like, oh, let's do a, I mean, just do one of those comics where you have like Stan in the book and everybody's meeting him and talking, that type of stuff. Because, you know, I understood, you know, you know, we're still COVID time, if you will. And, you know, of, of course, nobody was necessarily saw it coming, you know, wasn't expected. Like when we knew that, he, or like, like when we know something like with George Perez, but we knew George Perez was ter terminally ill, so I can understand that if they got caught flat-footed and we got the banner comics, and that was the and that was the end of it. However, okay, his hundred his hundredth birthday should not be something that your competitor knocks out the park, and you guys are like, yeah, let's just do a quick pinup at the end of the day. Especially since pinups were meant to be signed by the creators, and we're not going to get that from Stan Lee any longer. So. It, it, oh no! Just I mean, what can I say? Marvel, you're doing Phase Four much too long. You guys need to get back to being the House of Ideas, okay? And DC, hey, hats off. And like I said, every so often DC shows these guys <laughs> how it's done, and then they go back to being second best. But you know, this comes back to the fact that you have, and, and I'm with you on all what you just said. Uh, once again, it's, it just it doesn't make any sense. But you know, the very thing they need to come back and do their own. I mean, the very it's a shame. It's really a shame that DC does a hundred page comic. We're not even talking about a a, 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 a regular what 20, 32 page comic or something. They went they went out of their way to really say, hey, this guy put some ideas out here that did somehow filter into our thing. We think we had a we had a we had an old episode about that. Um, but the very fact that they 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 did this is just and there's no word from Marvel, nothing. They have nothing to say. I don't know what's with the leadership. The leadership of Marvel Comics, the leadership of the MCU. Come on. You should be pushing this, you know? It should be a, a Disney. They have their own Disney channel, right? The Disney Plus. They should have a special 30 minutes, you know, biography or whatever. Well, you also need the comic book guys. Somebody got something on? Okay. So, yeah. It, it, there's something. Yeah. Something oh, like hang on, hang on, hang on. Sorry. Okay, so, you know they also they still have a couple of comic book guys like Mark Carlin who work with Stan that are at DC. I don't think there's anybody left at Marvel with the comic thing to basically say, yeah, Stan was probably you know he was just yeah, kind of Stan. Uh, Stan was just like the, but you know, he was kind of the guy who signed his name to Kirby's work, and it's just like, come on, like we can, you know, you guys did right by Kirby. Let's not tear down Stan. Like Stan is here, he did some great stuff, put together some books with, um, you know, you have you can pull, a, do a, like a like a son like a son of origin, a fireside type book, with like you know, obviously like Silver Surfer four. Like a great um, one issue of like the this man this monster like a gear double with him and Gene Colan, um, you know like pulling out some stuff like that and um, just to have a nice volume of saying hey this is some of Stan's favorites of his own work that he liked and that sort of thing so and oh we're gonna put in the prose thing oh maybe we put in the destroyer maybe we put you know for you guys and that sort of thing. And maybe we'll bring back the Destroyer in the storyline. Anything to have fun. Like, oh no, we got Drax. Well, he, they, people know him as Drax. You can just do a regular Destroyer, just like all the other characters. That's the crazy part, you know? I don't know. You, you have a talent, you have the name, and now that the, the you know, and now that, I don't know. They just do need to do more before I go on too long about it. And 101 celebration of Stan's birthday, y'all need to come with it. <laughs> if y'all want to do one where you have him, you know, like, um, you know, like, um, go through the whole line of books like they did at one point, like, figure a way, figure a way to do it. Because the parts that always worked in the minus one one was the Stan intros. The problem was that you didn't have old school guys that kind of did stories that would work in the um in the past you know they kind of did stories that work in the present marvel type of deal so you know x-men you had 
a decent intro with Stan, but then you had like a Magneto and all these people that, you know, uh, I think the, what's the name? Um, Xavier should have already known was a mutant. So, but anyway, so, you know, just do more. That's my last bit. Sorry. They're not going to do anything for the 101, 101st birthday because they didn't do anything for the 100th birthday. And they think that, hey, we do something for the 101st birthday. We're going to have to do something every year. <laughs> Yeah, that's the thing. He's not. You don't have to. You don't have. You know, outside. You don't. You don't have him. You know. You don't have him to. You know, if they looked at it as a something that they were struggling with, where they were just like, "Oh, what are we doing?" He's just, you know, trying to look at Stan in a negative way, rather than say, "Hey, you know, whether there be so many people that added to it and helped it out, and you know." looking at um you know whatever like the dark phoenix or any other storyline and you hear the all of those guys that did all the stuff even the guys that went to dc like um perez and um and wolfman they all were trying to do the fantastic four they always all trying to do what happened with spider-man and you know these things that were you know personal to stan you know that he you know, even if he had, he was co-collaborating, you know, when it was coming to the finishing project, the writing and editing, you know, he always had a, a heavy hand in. So he's there, he, you know, celebrate him. You know, these, what's the name? Who knows what next year DC is going to do? <laughs> right. You know what? Look, you know, they, the 60th anniversary of Fantastic Four just, just went, um, passed, what, last year? Mm -hmm. Before. Hope sixtieth anniversary was uh what was was made in sixty two so I guess it's like was this year's you know next year is what the anniversary of what Iron Man you know those are do any of that anymore those are great examples of when you should be bringing him forward talking about his legacy you know Stan Lee um, Jack Kirby all those type of guys I mean if people have a problem because we know reading the books that there's some people like oh. Stanley stole everything. And I guess probably some people in Marvel must feel that way. You know, I'm not saying they do, but it just if, I don't know why they're not celebrating him the way DC is. So there must be some type of feeling or desire or or directive. I'm not sure. Or, or these guys just are lost. They don't know how to check dates or something. You know, these are times hey, dates that you should be um, bringing up. You know, the, Disney's no, notorious. The 50th anniversary of Mickey Mouse. The 50th anniversary of Bambi. The 10th anniversary, you know, <laughs> they're constantly bringing these things up, celebrating the anniversary, bringing the people and creators who made these things. And here, well, the thing, one of the page, a page. Yeah. Listen, let's say, let's say, hey, let's say hey, let's, if I was DC, I know exactly what I'm doing the next time. I would have all Stan Lee's characters, and then I would have them fight the, uh, the fourth world characters from Jack Kirby. They just imagine. <laughs> oh, I oh gosh. I can get a whole wow. bunch of I can, I, can get a, I can get a whole bunch of mileage. I get a whole bunch of mileage on oh. that right there. And I would keep them in the same vein. I would try to say, no, 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 we're gonna have the Kirby characters mm -hmm. acting Kirby, you know, the Stan Lee characters acting Stan Lee, and just you know, really go crazy with the whole thing. I could sell that. So hey, you could the thing is you could sell it. That's the thing. That's the big well, part of it. Keep these guys' names in the forefront. I mean, and we already discussed this. DC does a better job of promoting Jack Kirby than Marvel. DC came out and they did a, the fourth world. They did the entire fourth world run in absolute edition, slipcase hardcover. It's a beautiful, beautiful set, without a doubt. So pretty, I don't even want to open up it up. Well, I didn't even take it out of the plastic. But just a beautiful thing what they did for the, uh, the fourth world stuff. So what do we get? What do we get from Marvel? But the best you may get is a you know, get an Eternals omnibus, which pretty much looks the same like they all do. They're all the same book with just a different uh, dust jacket on it. But this is singular. What DC did, that is singular to Fourth World, Kirby stuff, okay? And it looks great. They don't do it, okay? They just don't do it. Well, I would say the thing of it is, this is how you get into the insanity. Because someone would say, say the... Stan's favorite character is Spider-Man or the Silver Surfer, depending on which day, right? So you decide, you know what? I'm going to take, I'm going to take Silver Surfer number four or one, one through four. Or you take um, Parable. You take the Enslavers. Take the one shot that he did with um, 
with burn and you put it all in one volume and say here is our anniversary thing for Stan's anniversary and everyone wakes up and says wait Stan didn't create him he even said it was a Kirby creation what does it matter we had the Claremont edition of Wolverine he didn't create him he just did great stories with him it's like that's what do the people want of what the person did or the collection of the Fantastic Four the, like these collections you can make you, know, you don't have to sit around and worry about hey are we insulting no we can we're not this is just this is not about who created what this is saying Stan did some these really nice Silver Surfer story as one of his favorite characters and here we're going to immortalize this in one volume where you get to see oh even that small thing they did in epic illustrated like put all this in one volume in a large edition and say here's all the stands uh, a, a smattering of his silver surfer work and you can look at it in one volume and be, be like wow and then to say what about kirby what why not do you can do your own kirby one you can put the another thing. You can put the Kirby and Lee Silver Surfer in that volume too. Like that's the thing, and and this uh, still with his collaborators. That's the thing that people kind of miss when they looked at the Son of Origins and when they saw it and they said, "By Stan Lee," talking about all of the stuff that's written in the passages before there. The credits for the creators are in there with the comics, reprinted there, not wiped out. So you see. You know, Stan, and Gene Colan, and Larry Lieber, and and all those guys, Kirby, just Steve Ditko. So I think instead of sitting around there worrying about what the peanut gallery is going to say when they say, what's happened to, what are you guys, why are you doing the Silver Surfer when he didn't create it? It's like, don't matter. He did, <laughs> he did enough. Well, no, he wanted to do some stuff. Like, don't matter. None of it matters. He's a publisher. If he wants to do a Silver Surfer comic, he could do it. You know, so he likes the character. It was one of his favorites. Why not do that? Why not take, you can take a smattering of, of the one issue stories of Spider-Man that he, you know, that he worked on and put into addition. It's anything that you can do. Fantastic Four, the same, which is, um, but yeah, I think you think about it like that, the same way the Fireside stuff was, you know, and just be like, here is a, your anniversary edition every year something like that and see how it goes and the thing of it is you got people going to the bookstores and they're just like oh yeah stan was in those things yeah, yeah. Buy, hmm? i agree i said here yeah, yeah. like I mean, then they go I in and they're like wow that's so great i'm taking that home oh yeah, yeah. Then, or, or, or go the simple route you can just do a re-release of the fireside stuff you could do the uh what is it the ultimate cosmic experience you got stan and jack on that one last work that they did do the I mean, DC did that for uh, the death of Superman's 30th anniversary. They're like, oh, we're going to re-release the... What did they do? They made a ton of money off that. They said, we're going to re-release the Omnibus, our fourth printing. Fourth printing of the death of Superman. And this one's more... This is probably the most expensive one, like 150 mm -hmm. They did, okay, we're going to do that. Then they did, we're going to do the whole... Uh, we're going to do an anniversary issue, all these variant covers. We're going to do a hardcover version. We're going to do two different hardcover versions of the same book. One's going to be direct market. One's going to be mass media market. And they all sold. They sold out. They did a second printing. Oh, I mean, it was, it was wild. And that's for the 30th anniversary. That was for the 30th anniversary of the death of Superman, which was a very, very important story for DC Comics. It's an important story for comics overall. It influenced, a lot of, it influenced a lot of stuff going forward. But if these guys, you know, that's how you're supposed to be doing. That's what you're supposed to be doing. Hey, we're going to reprint some of Stan's best stuff. We're going to repackage it. This floor back is going to be hardcover for all you cats. We're going to have this over here. Oh, you know, we're going to do the last you know, the work that he and Jack Kirby did together. I mean, the only reason I can think maybe they don't want to do it. I, no, I can't even imagine that because they have their contracts all settled with these, um, with like the heirs and so on and so forth, at least for right now. So there's no reason for it. It's just, it, 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 it's just, it's just bad. I got to, you know, you know. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, um, yeah, you can just ask, try to ask them, but there's too many people that basically said, "Look at Stan and be like, oh, he's a figurehead." It's like, well, what he, you know, he got he what was it what was he forty when he they hit it big again in comic books? He was a success at twenty as an editor, or you know, maybe even a little before that, and then he's he um, reinvents comics in his forties. And that's when you're supposed to be slowing down. 
right? So then you have a run of that stuff, and then um, you know, because he was still a tough editor, but you know, he was you know friends with Roy Thomas and all the other people that were coming up at Marvel in the seventies, and the same with the people in the eighties. You know, you can have the joking around that you know you hear that um, definitely we see that um, what was it the the Daredevil um, behind the scenes where they had all the creators and they had the intro and then and Miller says, this, there's more than kids out there reading this. And they cut to Stan and Stan is like, I hated that I hated that Mill is gonna look more edgy than me. I gotta be a little more edgier now. Like <laughs> them just having kind of fun, you know, fun with each other, you know, and um, the appreciation that like a lot of people in the eighties had for for Stan and somewhat in the nineties or the, you know, um, more so Marvel than most of the other the other companies. But, you know, it's uh, one of those things where you had someone that had the icon, you can't expect them to be just throwing out hits all the time. So um, thank you, DC, for doing your thing. Marvel, hey man, you don't have to do a CGI stand in every new movie to make it or put a, a poster up or stand in the back of the movie to say, hey, we're still celebrating them. Publish some stuff. Put some stuff out there. You don't have to sit around there and say, well, you know, they had to do the facsimile of the She-Hulk because you had the comic book that um, he did that, you know, the, the character he created for whatever reason you want to go to is still created, still him and John Buscema. And it's a decent story, you know, so like you got the guy, he did, you know, he, you know, if the character turned into TV, that's the thing I think when Berman was saying about doing the She-Hulk, he said, well, this is a real character because Stan created it. So let, let's, try, let's try to treat it like that. Even though, you know, she had like the, the break in the fourth wall, like saying, this is a viable character. Let's not just look at her like, oh, it's just like a wimpy Hulk type of thing. So, you know, he's great. You know, I'm a bit, as a fan, as a kid, you get to hear some of the behind the scenes, but then at the same time, you don't need to listen to it because the voice, the changing of the, the characterization of characters uh, directly, if you don't want to say, you want to co-creation, that language that he did, that banter, the David and Goliath type of thing, the, the, the fighting and bickering, that's all him. That's all him. So that's it. That's all I got. Mars, you want to close us out? Oh, no, we can't hear you. Um, You are muted. Oh, before we close it out. Oh, before you close it out, I just want to do one other thing. I didn't do it before we got to this. I just want you to remember, you're saying what well, we didn't get into much of the history. We got a whole video out there. I'm just going to play the first two seconds of it. And I was doing the comics. We got it already and, done uh, for y'all. Go check it out. Goodman told me how he wanted them done. A lot of action. A lot of fight scenes, not too much dialogue. Our readers don't like to read dialogue. And don't use any big words. They're not good at vocabulary. Just concentrate <laughs> on the fight scenes. That's what they like. Well, I can write a fight scene, I think, as well as anybody. But that's not what I wanted to spend my life doing. I said, how about characterization? How about caring for the characters and building them? Give me fight scenes. So I went home and I said to Joni, you know, honey, I think I'd like to quit. I can see this job is a dead end. It's going to lead to nothing. I might as well leave now and try to find something else to do. And then the thing you're leading up to, mm -hmm. she gave me the world's greatest advice. She said, why don't you do one book the way you want to do it? The worst that'll happen, he'll fire you but you want to quit anyway, at least you'll have gotten it out of your system. And that's our video. Check it out. It's still out there. <laughs> that is how the legend begins. If you like what you see, give us a thumbs up, comment, subscribe, spin a rack. Out. And watch the video. <laughs>